All right, so here we are in the trauma room with Sam, Sean, oh. and Maria. Maria. And uh, we're just uh, playing, doing some MacGyver stuff here. You can address the issue of where do you turn clockwise or counterclockwise based on where you are and with uh, what device. So I'm going to pass this over to John to do some video. So the model that we're going to use here is just some corrugated tubing. And so hopefully you can imagine that that's the glottic inlet. Um, everybody can sort of appreciate that. And that this corrugated tubing that I've cut out in the side represents sort of tracheal rings, which again, you're only going to see anteriorly. But um, when you place a bougie, and I wouldn't have a preloaded bougie, I just have it on from a simplicity point of view, and we've reached end point or hold up. Um, what will sometimes happen, now I have a number, I just have a small endotracheal tube and I've cut off the cuffs just so you can visualize it. So, but but what will happen is because you're working out of the right side of the mouth and your laryngoscope will still be in, the, the leading edge of the bevel, right, is facing the right, okay? Leading edge of the bevel is facing the, the right. So what will happen is, is that you'll sometimes hit um, these right-sided structures um, right paraglottic structures and we can manage that by rotating it to the left okay or counterclockwise I like thinking of right versus left as opposed to clockwise counterclockwise and what that does is takes the bevel off of uh, the right side of structures and puts the, the bevel face down and now it will sail through and uh, your obstruction will be managed right so that if you're using a bougie or doing flexible scope and you meet hold up pre glottic inlet it's moved to the left okay sometimes you have to bring it back and then move to the left and go down because if it's hung up on it and you try to rotate it off it's it's not going to move off okay so you come back move left and you'll sail in so pre glottic inlet you move uh, um, uh, right, so proximal to the glottic, and then you, sorry, move to left. Now, if we're if we're uh, doing video laryngoscopy, um, and the same thing happens with direct laryngoscopy, and uh, um, and this was really f from an observation of a study where we're reviewing um, uh, GlideScope uh, video and looking what the corrective maneuvers are, whether you're too close or too far. But we've got the cutout here, and it's, it's different. So what's happening here? This tends to happen when you have too uh, acute a bend, and really bends beyond 60 degrees are probably most at, at risk. So that's the uh, the scenario where you get into trouble. And the leading edge of the bevel is getting caught on the tracheal rings here. So you can sort of you can feel that or appreciate that, and and people are having problems with advancing it. So the two corrective maneuvers to do, one is I always have my stylet bent proximally to the left. Okay, so what I can do is just come up here with my thumb and do a quick thumbs up, right? And all I have to do is come up three centimeters. That makes the, the end of the tube now soft, right? And it's not going to get caught on the tracheal rings. Sometimes it still will be. The next corrective maneuver is to move to the right okay so you're dropping it to the bed and what that's doing is making the open face of the bevel go up that takes the leading edge of the tube off the rings rings it also directs the endotracheal tube in the long axis of the trachea so now you can push it down okay so again the message is if you're proximal to the glottic inlet and getting hold up with a bougie or a scope you rotate left pull back rotate left if you're through the glottic inlet, um, then pull back your, uh, your uh, stylet just a, a little bit, two, three centimeters, don't get somebody to pull it out, and then drop it to the right. Okay, what that does is takes the bevel off the tracheal rings um, and it orients the distal end of the tube in a long axis of the trachea.